this computer. Okay, I'm going to record it right now. All right, thank you. Okay, so, um, so okay, so um, this is the uh, uh, our lecture. My name is Dr. Boxan Dong. So if you are, uh, if you want to look for more information about me, feel free to go to my personal web web page. And uh, so, so um, I, this is my office. Even though I haven't got, gone to my office for in the past maybe half year, not not half year, three months at least. So I. Last semester, I, I, I had a face-to-face uh, -face class and I stopped going to campus uh, before, before the, uh, the, the uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, this is my email uh, address. I'm pretty fast at re replying emails. Um, so, uh, so this is the outline of our class today. So uh, first, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. Uh, about this course, and then we're going to learn the first uh, algorithm, which is insertion sort. And actually, this is the content for for this week, rather than uh, rather than just this, uh, uh, say say, uh, rather than just this this class. So, because we are going to have another class this Friday, so uh, we probably will stop somewhere around here and leave the rest to to Friday. So. Um, uh, let's let's have a, an overview of the class. So before you come to uh, this class, uh, what do you sh so you, you you should have already taken fi finish says that you one twelve and math one twenty two. So um, I know that most most of you are not a, a fan of math. So if you do bad in this course, if you do bad in the math course, it's it's not going to have a big impact for you. Uh, in this course, in our course, uh, to to twelve, so uh, don't worry too much about it. And uh, uh, so, so then, um, uh, but this one, the Java two, this is relatively more important because in our class we're going to deal a lot with programming. So if you are not familiar with Java, I know some of you may uh, be transfer students from a different college. So if you haven't take take taken a Java class, or say you are Say you 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 took Java quite long ago. You you have to refresh it by yourself. In this week, just in this week, because in this week you will not have any homework due. But starting from next week, next Friday, you will have your first programming assignment due. So everything is a, in this class is in your homework and project is about programming. So brush up brush up. Uh, so 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 uh, refresh your Java, and. Uh, so that's why I say uh, before you come to, to this class, you, you should have the ability to pro, to program in Java. So uh, some of you may have thought about, okay, what kind of ability should I have in terms of Java programming? So let me just ask you a, ver a, 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 a few questions, okay? Do you know what is a class? And do you know, just while I ask this question, just think about it, okay? Uh, do you know if you have uh, so what, what what is a class? What is a static function? Uh, or what it, what it, what are the class members? What are class functions in Java? What is the return type of a of a certain class? So what is static? What is a static class member? And also what is a a uh, so sorry? Um, so so. Uh, let me let me say what else. It's just just this, okay? If you if you have answers to them, then that's pretty good. So it means that uh, you are in good shape. So so uh, uh, the the first homework, especially the no, especially the first couple of homeworks, will not be too difficult for you. Um, so and then what what can you expect from this class, okay? From this course. So um, uh, first in the in the lectures. My task in the, my task in the lecture is to explain those data structures and algorithms for you. Okay, I, I will show you why it works, and so so uh, so so to to help you to understand the logic of this of this data structures and algorithms. And then uh, another uh, task for me in the class is to show you the complexity analysis of a algorithm. So you will deal with this. This is more. This is where you will need some math, but it's not too difficult. So, so if you do good in your high high school math classes, then it will be fine. It will be fine over here. So, um, and then, so the third thing is up to you. Okay. 
so fluent coding skills in Java. So my, my task in the, in the lectures are best, okay? In the lectures are the first two. So I'm going to show, I'm going to explain uh, the, the, um, the, the logic and the, the complexity part for you. Whereas for the third task, it's totally up to you in the homeworks. I'm going to assign a lot of programming homeworks to you and you are going to, to uh, say, improve your coding skills in Java throughout the homeworks. So, um, I mean, there is no, no shortcut to be a good, good programmer. So you have to pay a lot of time. Uh, so, so in order to achieve, achieve this object, this is totally up to you. Uh, I'm not going to be, so I, I, so if you have a difficulty with programming, you can send your code for me for debug. That's, that's okay. That's, that's the help that I'm going to help. I'm going to help, uh, offer to you, uh, with regard to coding, but it, so, it is you uh, who, who really decides if you can be a good programmer or not. So for example, um, if, you're like, if, you, if you just meet a guy with a lot of muscles and you ask the guy, okay, how did you get those muscles? And that guy may, may uh, so I, I mean, probably a hundred with a hundred percent probability, that guy will tell you, okay, just, I'm just spending two hours at the gym every day. And uh, also I'm just, I, I don't eat any junk food at all. So this is that the efforts they pay in order to shape their body. So, so they, it's, it's through diligence and uh, also self regular uh, regularization. So, so here it is also up to you. Okay. If you want to be a good, good programmer, it is up to you to pay these efforts. So through diligence and self regularization too. So, um, Okay, and also the last task is to adapt these uh, algorithms to solve uh, practical problems. So we don't we don't have a lot of space over here. We don't have a lot of time over here. And actually, this most of this should be left to your three hundred level classes. Uh, so so uh, you will you will be able to adapt them uh, and then uh, so use them in in your three hundred level classes. So we are going to only have a little bit of touch with it in our class. Um, so, uh, and this is the uh, overview of the class. Uh, so, sorry, this is what I uh, demand from you, okay? What I ask from you uh, in order to be successful in this class. So first, um, we, we do have a textbook. The name is uh, this, called Introduction to Algorithms. And uh, so, so, uh, uh, this book is is uh, publicly available online. So if you just, I'm not sure if this link still works or not. I found it probably one one month ago. But the thing is that if so, if there is a lot a lot of downloads of this book, they will shut down that link. So if this link does not so uh, if this link does not work, uh, you can just Google the name of the book and you will be able to find it easily find it without without go through, going through many pages, you will be able to find a free link to this book. So, so, um, and, and so, so every week, I'm going to give you a reading task for about two hours. So, um, I mean, that's bad, that, that sucks. As a computer science or IT student, you don't want to spend a lot of time just reading as if you are a literature student or an art student. So, so I don't like to, to assign uh, reading tasks, reading tasks to students either. So uh, it's, it's boring. It's, it's not practical at all. You, you won't learn programming skills by just reading books. So you have to get your hands dirty by typing your programs and find uh, resolving the bugs by yourself. So, but uh, the reason why I still have to give you two, uh, two to three hours reading uh, a week is because this book is around 1200 pages thick. It's, if, you, if you find that book, uh, I, I have a hard copy of, uh, of that book in my office, it's, it's this thick. So about two or three inches. And uh, so, so um, it, it includes uh, uh, 1200 pages. So out of this 1200 pages, I only require you to read around tw uh, 200 pages. And this is, or must be. I, I, I cannot deduct it, deduct it more, okay? I only uh, pick 
the, the, two, uh, the most important 200 pages for, for you to read. So the reason why I, ask you, why I ask you to read it is that if you do not have a very good understanding about the data structure or algorithm through, through, in my lectures, then you have an opportunity to recap it, to, to learn it well from reading the book. It's, it's totally worthwhile. And also, even though this book is, is, is publicly free online, you can, you can get a, a, a PDF free. I strongly recommend you to, to keep a hard copy of it. So, um, so in my personal experience, I, I, so my, my bachelor degree is in software engineering. And then my, uh, I, I earned my PhD in, in computer science. So uh, in total, I spent four years in my bachelor degree and plus 5.5 uh, years in my PhD. Okay, so uh, in this almost 10 years, I took this course twice, two times, and once in my undergraduate years and once in my uh, PhD life. So uh, I, in throughout this, this almost uh, 9.5 years, I have taken over, let me say, 50 courses that, is rela that are related to computer science. So among these 50 courses, if you ask me, if you ask me what is the most important one in order for a fresh undergraduate students to get a job in IT or, 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 or CS or anything that is related to programming, if you ask me what is the most important course. So, so uh, I, I, pro I provide the following answer. No, so, 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 not because I'm the instructor of this course. It's, it's, it's this is pr uh, pre pretty, pretty objective. So, there are two courses that are, in my opinion, that are most important in order for to be able to get to start your career in uh, in IT or 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 CS. That that there are that structures and algorithms, which is our course, and the other course is database. Okay, so if you are good at these courses, you will be able to secure fund. So, so you will be able to 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 land in the field of of uh, pro, uh, uh, so so uh, of IT. So uh, and also uh, to let you know, okay, uh, in my opinion, the the most difficult the most difficult thing in terms of finding a job is your first job. After you find your first job, you will be able to accumulate your network. You'll be able to build your, your network. And also you will be able to accumulate your experience so that next time when you want to search for another job, you got references from, from, from your network. And also you got your, the recommendations from your, from your colleagues. So, so it's, it's going to be much easier for you to, to, to find your second or third job. And to, in order for, so, so for, in my experience, the, 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 the most difficult thing for, for you in terms of job is to find your, your first one. So in order for you to, to find the first one, my, my opinion is that data structures and the database are the two most important courses. So that's why I strongly suggest you to keep a hard copy of this book for future references. So throughout this almost 10 years, I read these books five times. So two times when, when, I, uh, uh, when I took, took this course, three times when I look for internships in my PhD lives. So the, the way that I look for my internship, so here, uh, I'm not, so I think there is a uh, uh, raise button sign, raise button sign in, in Zoom. Just, uh, just, just type something or just raise, raise the hand in the a, in a, uh, in a chat area. Uh, so let me know if you have been in any coding interviews before or interviews regarding programmers before. Can you Anyone? say that one more time? I'm sorry. Okay. So just type in something or, or say, say use the, the wave hand, wave hand uh, function in Zoom if you have been in any uh, coding interviews or, job, uh, or, or IT related uh, uh, interviews before. Okay, so I got, let me say, uh, uh, probably, okay, I'm just going to, so is there anyone who want to talk about their experience uh, in, in, in coding interviews? 
So if you want to talk about it, if you have that experience and if you want to talk about it, just uh, open up your Mac and feel free to speak. Anyone? No? Okay. So, uh, so here, I'm going to tell, my, tell you my experience regarding uh, job hunting. So, in my, uh, so here we, we, we've, uh, we got something to say. My friends say that their coding interviews are extremely difficult and that even experienced, even experienced coders struggle. That's true. So, um, like in, the, in my second year when I did my PhD, I, I thought, okay, I want to, oh, sorry, my, my uh, iPad just shut down. Okay, I'm going to open it up again. So, um, so uh, uh, start book. Okay, so in my in my second year, uh, uh, when I was doing my PhD, I said, okay, I want I want to look for an internship in the summer. So then I started applying for a few positions online. I thought, okay, because I am doing my PhD, so I should be it should be relatively easy for me to to find one. So at least I think I'm better than fresh undergraduate students. So um, and then when. Uh, I, I, I don't remember how many jobs did I apply, but finally one, one or two companies replied to me, and one of them is, is located in very close to Princeton. I don't, I don't remember exactly the, where, where the location exactly is. They, they give me a, a phone interview, which is pretty, because it's, it's an internship. So then, uh, so, so interview. So the phone interview is, is extremely easy. Uh, I just talked with the, the, uh, the HR saying, okay, hello, what kind of project did you do? And what's your, uh, so what kind of, of courses have you done at school? So yes, I, uh, it's about 20 minutes and it's not difficult at all. And then, then they scheduled me an onsite, an onsite interview. And I, I drove up to, to their company. In, uh, so after one week of the, of the phone interview, I, I, I went to the onsite interview. I, what I expect is something like big talk, like, okay, what's your hobby? And or say, say what, what courses have you taken? No, they just give me a whiteboard, a whiteboard, a whiteboard like this, okay? A whiteboard like this. They, they give me a whiteboard, ask me to write down C++ code to solve something like insertion sort or, or dynamic programming. There is no web page, there is no stack, stack overflow, no API, nothing. I have to write, write down the code from scratch by myself. I was like, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be here. So, so uh, I, I was really embarrassed because I don't, I, 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 I just define the function and I just write, write, write down the function name and with a couple of lines, I, I said, okay, I, I, I couldn't do that. And of course I didn't get it. So that is, that is real world job interviews, okay? So, um, so after that, after that experience, every time I, I want to step into the job market, say I want to look for an internship, before I want to look for an internship or, or, or say, say a full-time job, before I apply those jobs, I, I really go over this book first to, to refresh these that structures and the algorithms, and then I did my coding, I practice my coding. And uh, so, so, um, so a little bit for, for about two, or th uh, two months and then I, I applied and go to interviews. So only in that way, there is a chance for to, to survive that code interview and, and get the job. So that's why I say, okay, so I strongly encourage you to keep a, a, a hard copy of this book for future references because I make a, a lot of notes on my book. So the next time say, if I want to look for, uh, if I, I'm about to enter the job market, I need to go through it. I need to refresh this, this topic, this algorithms. I just need to follow my notes on the book and it saves me a lot of time. So it's pretty worthwhile. It's only like 30, 35 bucks on Amazon. So, so it's, it's totally worthwhile. Um, this is the, uh, the book that I read uh, second most in my life. So, so um, and I, I truly uh, say enjoy that. And okay. And plus the reading, okay, plus the reading, because this book, the, the, sorry, the aim of this course, or the, at least my, my objective of this course is to, to make you become good programmers. So, um, so that's why besides reading, I will give you a lot of 
programming assignments. So the it will each week you you can anticipate anywhere from two to five hours of programming assignments. So so especially in the first first couple of weeks because for the first couple of homeworks it will, it will be relatively difficult for you because you don't you don't remember too much about Java or you don't you don't you are not familiar with my skeleton code. So so um, the first couple of, of weeks will be more difficult for you. According to my experience, most of the students spend uh, on average eight hours in the first two weeks. Uh, so, so on the programming assignments. So it's like 10 hours of work in the first two, two weeks. And then for the future, you can expect anywhere from five to eight hours. Okay, so per, per week. But in the first couple of weeks, it's definitely going to be much longer, eight, 10, or even longer. So last, last semester, uh, I got a, a really good student in my class. He, he had a very solid programming background in, from uh, the Java 1, and Java 2. Uh, uh, so, so he told me that the first homework, to, uh, so, sorry, the second homework, the second homework took him 12 hours straight. So yes, um, it, 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 sounds, it sounds pretty bad, it sounds pretty horrible, right? Uh, so so you, may, you may feel like, oh my God, this is just one course. If you, have, if you, you are taking like six, seven courses at the same time, then how are you going to be able to survive if each one is going to take you 10 hours or eight hours a week? But the, so I'm, I'm a person who do not like to assign a lot of homeworks to students. So, so um, if you, uh, besides this course, I usually also t uh, teach th CSIT 335. So CSIT 335, which is oper operating systems, operating systems. So when I, taught th that, when I teach that course, I only, I only have assigned two homeworks throughout a whole semester to the students. And each of them takes the student, pro uh, one student probably anywhere from one to two hours. That's it. So the homework, so it's because, the, so because that, that course is not that, that important. So uh, with regard to your career, so, so I only do minimum uh, requirement for you, have, have minimum requirement for you, but because this course is so important regarding, uh, regarding your, your career, especially the start of your career. So, so, um, so I have to give you a lot of tough work. And again, so if you want to be a good programmer, the only way is to pay your efforts. So, so um, this, this is the, the course where you're going to, to practice most of your programming skills. And actually, um, this, is, this course is kind of like the last opportunity for you to, pr to practice your programming in school. This is because after you finish this course, after you go to the 300 level classes, all the instructors would assume that you are a very good programmer. So they will not teach you programming. They just ask you to program this, program that, okay? So, so if you do bad in this class, I'm not sure how are you going to be able to survive in, uh, the 300 level classes. And even though you survive them and you got your degree, even though you, 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 uh, you got your degree, you will not be able to, to find a job. That's in, in IT in the in as a programmer. So so uh, so uh, this is the reason why I ask so much from you. So and uh, this is our evaluation matrix. So so here you can say um, on the left you can say that uh, our course mainly consists of three parts, which are assignments, final projects, and final project and final exam. So the majority of the of uh, a majority of your your grade comes from assignments. So um, so pay a lot of efforts to uh, to your assignments, and uh, uh, so so uh, and this is the way for you to calculate your your grade. So if if your overall grade is is over is higher than uh, ninety five percent, you will be able to get A, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And also if your grade is lower than 60%, if your overall grade is, is lower than 60%, it's, it's an F. So, so and we, I'm not going to do curve. So there is no curve and, and your grade is going to be calculated straightforwardly. And after, at the end of the semester, after you finish your, your final exam and I post your, 
your final exam grade on Canvas. Actually, you can calculate your, your overall grade by yourself very easily by following this metric. And then you'll be able to translate it to the letter-based grade. So, um, so uh, please do not uh, send me emails after final exam regarding your grade, except for you think that I made a mistake in calculating your grade, which I never did. So, so um, uh, in the past semester, I, I just around the, the uh, Christmas time, so I, 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 I received a few emails from the students in, from, my la from last semester saying that asking for a higher grade. I, 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 I will not do that, okay? The thing is that, say here, uh, say if your grade is, is, is higher, than, uh, higher than or equal to 90%, but lower than 95%, you will get A minus. One example is that, so for example, if you get 94.8, you will still get A minus, not A, okay? So, so um, it's, it's, uh, I'm very strict about the grid in order to be uh, fair for everyone. I'm not going to run it up. So, um, so but, but uh, the good thing is that I give you a lot of, I give you quite a few opportunities for extra credit. So, uh, so, so uh, in the assignments and, um, um, so from my, my past experience, most, at least 50% of the students can get at either A minus or A. So, um, at least 50%. So, uh, and I rarely fail students. I don't want to fail students, but if your grade is lower than, uh, 60%, I have to, uh, okay. So this is the evaluation metric and this is our tentative schedule. So I know that we have uh, 14 weeks in total rather than 30, but I, I just leave one week as buffer time, just in case that we need to repeat on some topic or just in case say, say our class is canceled for some reason. So, and this is the, the tentative schedule. And here you can say it's really, it's, it looks really terrible, right? You've got every week, you've got an assignment except for the week of, of, of final exam, okay? So yes, um, so 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 uh, this is the the way that I'm going to help you with programming. So uh, I, I'm going to use the homework, the programming homework, as the driving force to ask you to spend time on, on programming. Okay, so so you you are going to have homework every week. And uh, uh, this is the policy of of our class. <clears throat> First, zero tolerance of plagiarism. So if you if I find you teaching, yeah, sorry, if I find you cheating or just copy and pasting someone else code, you will receive automatic automatically F in this course, zero tolerance. And uh, I remember that one one year ago or one and a half years ago, there are two students who failed this course in the third week because I caught I found their they are cheating in in their first homework when I grade them. So, so don't do that, it's silly. Um, you, pay your, you pay your tuition um, by, so, so, by uh, so, so here, you enter this course, you, 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 took, you take this course and pay your tuition. Not for just passing this course, but for, get, for improving your, your coding skills. So, so, so uh, don't do that. It's, the cheating is just a, a waste of your time and a humiliating of yourself and also me. I don't want to, I don't want to detect any of that. And uh, also uh, submit your homework on time. So otherwise you will receive a, uh, a late penalty. So, okay, so one student is asking me if the, if, is the lecture being recorded? Yes, I'm recording it. So, and, uh, okay. And the, uh, so, so also uh, take your exam on time, finish your homework on time. The, the late penalty, I'm going to show you uh, the, the, the course syllabi over here, okay? This is our course syllabi. And, okay, so, uh, so this is our class meeting time. And uh, uh, I'm going to have office hours on Tuesdays from 1.30 to 3.30. So, uh, and for, for uh, at the time when I cannot do, uh, uh, when we cannot go back to campus, uh, I'm going to have virtual office hours, just following the same link to our, uh, uh, as this Zoom meeting, you'll be able to, to go to my uh, uh, virtual office hours. And um, so um, here, 
um, so we will only so 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 uh, due to the, the pandemic we will only con be able work I'm only I'm only considering uh, going back to campus and have face-to-face -to -face meetings when the daily positive uh, daily test positive rate is below two percent or even one percent to, to play to safe so my so I think that if everything goes well we probably can go back to campus in either late March or, or early uh, April. So, okay, here I got another question. Are the homeworks worth the same for each one? Yes, they, uh, they, are, they are equally weighted. And the other question is that when where the video will be uploaded? So uh, I'm not so sure yet because previously I didn't, uh, I haven't considered about uh, rec recording the video because, because we're doing, everyone is synchronously online. So, but since I, I have already recorded, I, I'm not sure uh, either I will just, just uh, put it on, on, on the Zoom cloud and share you the, the, the link, t I think tonight. Or say, say probably I will, I'm not uh, probably I will also upload a version to you, my YouTube channel. So, so then in that case, I'm going to share the link of my YouTube channel to you later. So, uh, uh, so, so, uh, I, I don't, I don't create the YouTube channel to be famous or to make money. I just, I just upload the teaching videos for, for students references. Okay. So, um, here, I think if everything, uh, let's get, get back to the syllabus. Uh, if, if everything uh, is, is okay, so we probably will go back to, to, to campus late uh, March or, or early April, but the earlier, the better. So, uh, and uh, uh, let me say what else. Uh, huh. uh, okay, let me say what is the lead panel, okay? So, um, so if you if you submit your homeworks late by one day, let's say if you submit your homework late by one day, you will receive ten percent late penalty. For two days, it's twenty percent. Three days, it's thirty percent. If you if you submit late for more than three days, it will be zero. Okay, but I'm pretty flexible with extension. Okay, so because I know that everybody has a life, which is definitely more important and life and family are more important than the of course so so um, um, my uh, my logic is that okay so if you are experiencing difficulty with your life say for example if you have a, a family who is sick and you need to take care of that person or say if you need to move to a new apartment and you need some time to accommodate that just let me know before the uh, due date of the homework and so that I can give you an extension. So just send me an email saying, okay, professor, I need an extension for what kind of reason? Uh, probably I will need this long and so that I'll be able to, to give you the extension. And also um, the thing is that, okay, uh, the other thing that I want, you, uh, want to let you know is that it is not me who created the homeworks. It is the, G we have a GA who created, who created your homeworks. Um, so, so, uh, if, if, you, if you think that the GA does not grade your homeworks correctly, just drop me an email. So, so either I will let the GA correct it for you or I'm going to, 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 to uh, double check your homework by, by myself. Okay, so uh, yes, this is everything that, uh, no, if, okay, I have one more page. So, so uh, here, and what I can help you to, to with uh, to, uh, in order for for you to be successful in this class. So first, I got my office hours, and then in the class, I'm going to uh, explain the the, the pseudocodes and uh, the the logic of the algorithms and that structures for, for you. And also, I'm going to to uh, so for you to start the homework, I'm going to use one um, use one uh, lecture uh, to as a tutorial for you to start the homework which is next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I'm going to give you a, uh, uh, I'm going to, 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 to uh, say, say, give you a lecture uh, on, or a, a tutorial on how to start the homework, how to do the homework. So, and uh, uh, okay, and the last thing I want you to remember is that 
I'm not a person who come here to evaluate you. Okay, so I'm not an evaluator. I'm here to help you. You pay your tuition to the school and, and a part of it goes into my pocket. So, and so basically you are my customer. I'm here to serve you, okay, to help you. So, so, uh, uh, so uh, it will be great if, if at the end of the semester, we will be able to, to make friends with each, with each other. And uh, so, yes, um, that's everything that I want to share with you about the framework of this course. So do you have any question related to that? So if you have any question, just leave your message in the chat area or say, um, just open, your, open up your Mac and say something, ask your question. Okay, so one question is that will I assign coding and coding challenges like once in job interviews? No. The thing is that okay, so if so in this in this course, in, in this course, we are going to learn those data structures and algorithms. And in your in your job interviews, they are going to ask you questions to okay and some question and which requires you uh which requires a, a computer science logic from you means that you will need to come up with okay to solve this question i will need to use that structure one plus algorithm two together and then implement that translate that into code so 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 the real code interview uh, uh, interview questions are more difficult than the questions that i assign in our homeworks but the reason why I cannot assign is that you are not at that level yet. Okay, does it make sense? <clears throat> okay, so, um, so not really a question, but I miss a bit of what you said at the beginning because I was having issues with my internet. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure uh, what, uh, what do you mean by what I said in the beginning. In the beginning, I just gave an introduction of myself. And uh, then it, it is the overview of this class. If you miss it, uh, probably you can go back to view the the the, uh, the recorded videos later. I'm going to up to share it with you by the end of tonight. Okay. So um, when can we expect a grade of uh, for submitted homework? So uh, I usually give one week. Uh, sorry, two weeks to to the GA to to grade the homeworks. Okay. So if since you asked this question, I'm going to to uh, say say um, uh, sh say say uh, share my my logic with you. Okay, so so the, okay, if this is the calendar and this is Tuesday, this is Tuesday, and this is Friday. Okay, so this is uh, another week. Okay, so usually your homework is going to be assigned either this is the home homework assigned date you you will be assigned a homework either on tuesday or friday so so uh i think mostly it's, it's the friday okay and your homework is going to be due next friday so you will have a whole week to do that you will have seven days to, or, or eight days to, to, to do a homework and what i ask from the ga is that I, I ask that person, I ask the GA to finish the to finish grading one week after after the due date. But sometimes, because some students ask for an extension, or say say the GA is ha is having a, a midterm because the GA is basically a, a graduate student. He he's also doing some coursework. I allow at most two weeks. So so it's, it's it means that after you submit your homework, you can you normally you can expect your your grade within one week but a lot up to two weeks for for the ga to do that so uh so i work full time uh uh so i got a question i, I work full time from five to one uh, at night uh to help out my family uh would there be any way to submit assignments on the weekend if not that uh, that is fine yes uh it's possible so so if you need special accommodation for the homework due date um so so uh just 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 send me an email okay so that i can i can uh, uh, do that for you so but in general um so the thing is that i i used to uh to to assign the the, the due date of the homework to be on sundays but the thing is that most of the students 
would only start the homework either in the morning of Sunday or say say in the afternoon of Sunday. And so and actually this happened this happened to me when I was a student. Say if I have if I had a homework whose due date is this Sunday, no matter how early this homework was assigned, probably I will just delay the, the start of the homework until a few hours before the due date. And but I would just play, let's say I'll just just pretend there is no homework on set on Fridays and and Saturdays and play video games. But the thing is that when I was playing, there was something in my mind. I know that tomorrow I got a big big thing to do. I and what makes it worse is that I don't know if I can handle it within a couple of hours, but I just want to play. So which makes my playing is not a very enjoyable experience, even though I was I was pay, paying my time playing, but I don't re really enjoy it because there there is some my homework is worrying me. That's why I I want to make the the due date of the homework on Friday, so that you finish your work on Friday and enjoy your weekend. But if you need special accommodation, just let me know. Uh, will there be a penalty if I cannot uh, attend a certain lecture? So. Um, I mean, I, I'm not a guy who wants to force the students to come to class. Because if you, if you don't think that you can learn anything from me, it's going to be a waste of, of your time if I force you to come, if I, if I force everybody to come. So, so um, if, you, if you, if say for some reason, you miss a couple of, of lectures, I say one or two lectures, uh, I don't mind. And uh, so, so, uh, uh, Yes, it's it's fine. It's fine. There is no penalty, as long as you are you you can be a good programmer. Uh, if you want, you can leave me. You can leave me alone, and I can leave you alone. Okay, so, uh, okay. So, uh, any other question? Hey, professor. I actually, have one. Um, Sorry, so I, I didn't hear you clearly. You can hear me. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. I I got a wire because I I have my uh, <laughs> microphone. Oh, sorry. I, I got I got my he headphone. Okay. okay. I'm going to... Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can. There's a little echo. Yes, I also hear that echo, but I mute my. Uh, Laptop and only unmute my uh, iPad Pro. I'm sorry for the echo. I'm going to figure figure it out later. It's okay. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So uh, in that case, I'm going to say. Okay. I know why. Because I'm. How about now? Any echo? Because I mute my uh, no, no I, I, I mute my laptop. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Wait, I'm so sorry, I do actually. My, my laptop is is playing my song and <laughs> playing it for you again. So that's why there's an echo. Okay, great. So um, so without uh, further ado, I, I do have one question. If you don't mind. Oh, oh, say. Yeah. Do have okay. Um, so I am a transfer student, and um, I did do my one twelve class at my uh, university or at Bergen Community College, um, and they didn't go over Java. We went over C plus plus. So, would what would you recommend as far as getting comfortable with with uh, Java, like YouTube? Okay, so you are asking from. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I I cannot hear you very clearly. Uh, my my uh, my app iPad Pro is is the the sound from my my iPad Pro is pretty low, the voice from it. Uh, I think your uh, your question is okay. You are you only learn C plus plus, not Java, and you are asking for some resources to learn Java, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so I think this question can may may uh, may also apply for uh, some other students. So um, uh, I'm going to share a couple of resources with you, and uh, actually, right after this this lecture, I'm going to share um, a slides with you uh, on. To, to review Java, okay, named Java Review. And at the end of that slide, there is going to be a page which shows a couple of websites for you to brush up your Java. Okay, all right, thank but you. In I'll general, you. just in general, yeah, if you are good at C++, the transition from C++ to Java is 
is easier than the than going back in, in another direction because C plus plus is more lower level than Java. Okay. So it's yeah, not it's going to be that difficult, even though uh, you you need to spend maybe one month just uh, be uh, uh, just uh, adapting to the uh, conventions in Java. Okay. All right. Then um, I will definitely check the links out. Thank you. Okay. So uh, yes, then. Uh, uh, let's start our our uh, uh, class. So so uh, here, uh, the, uh, so so um, I'm going to next. I'm going to introduce the first and the only two uh, definitions in, in in our class. That is, an al uh, so that is algorithm and a pro uh, computational problem. So so uh, what is that algorithm? An algorithm is basically a computational procedure to solve problems, to solve a computational problem. So so uh, so basically, uh, you can you can think algorithms as a, a computational instructions to resolve a, a a problem to solve computational problem. And then, what is the computational problem? Computation. The definition of a computational problem is just this. Okay, a specification of the input and output. So so for example, in, in a sorting problem, in a sorting problem, the uh, the input is a sequence of numbers. And then the output is just a permutation or an ordering of these numbers, so that they are for, they're they are from uh, the numbers are from the smallest to the largest in ascending order. So this is the definition of a a, a uh, sorting problem. And then um, so so uh, so then we are using uh, where we so so to to solve the problem to solve a problem we we can have multiple Solutions or multiple algorithms. So we we can have algorithm A, algorithm B, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're different algorithms to solve the same uh, computational problem. To solve the same computational problem. So you can take it this way. Okay, if I give you a task, so the input is that you are located in. If if I give you a a, a, a task or problem, so say go to Los Angeles from New Jersey, from your home. And then to solve this prob problem, you have you can have multiple solutions. So one solution would be okay, you take a flight. The other solution is that you drive all the way, or you can just walk all the way from New Jersey to 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 Los Angeles. So to solve the same problem, there are multiple solutions. And similarly, to solve the same computational problems, there can be multiple algorithms. An algorithm is basically like a solution to a computational problem. So so and. Uh, so so and in the first uh, three weeks of our, of our course, we're going to focus on a problem named sorting problem. Okay, we're going to focus on sorting problem. So in sorting problem, we are giving an input of a sequence of numbers, and we want to we want to output and the the same set of numbers but in ascending order. Basically, we want to sort we want to sort these numbers, and then uh, so so. So uh, and so so an instance of the input, an instance of the input is just an example of the input. An example of the input is like here. Okay. So for example, if I give you an input instance, which are 31, uh, 41, uh, 59, 20, 26, and uh, 41 and and 58, what do you expect expect the output to be, uh, in terms of a sorting problem? What, what do we expect? Uh, so, so if I give you the input, so this is okay, a, a, so, a sorting algorithm. If, I, if this is a sort, sorting algorithm, and I give you an input, and I, I'm, I'm at, so it will, uh, the, the algorithm will output, uh, will give you an output. So here, if I say, okay, I give you an, an input sequence as, so as over here, 31, 40, uh, uh, so 41. 59, et cetera, et cetera. What do you ex expect the output to be? Would you want it from least to greatest? Yes, from the least to great to, to the largest, which are you we expect the output to, to the output to be uh, 26, 31, 41, 41, uh, 58, 59, right? Yep. Yes. So yeah. yes, this is just an an instance of the input and output for the sorting problem, and there, 
So, so, and in the, in the first three weeks, we are going to focus on starting pro the starting problem, and we are going to learn, uh, let me say, how many algorithms to solve the four algorithms to, to, to solve the same problem, which is the sorting problem. The, there are four different algorithms to solve the sorting problem, and we are going to learn each of them. And each of them comes with their advantages and disadvantages. So, for example, if we if we go back to the real world problem of traveling from New Jersey to, to California, then if you if your solution is taking the flight, so then the the uh, the, the the advantage is going to be it's it's it's, it's going to be really fast. But the disadvantage is that at the current time you, you probably have to take the risk of of COVID. So you're, you're sitting in a in a flight for six hours. But if you say if you want to uh, say drive all the way from uh, New Jersey, the, if the solution is is dri driving, then uh, the advantage is probably that is that it's safer, but it's it's going to take longer. So every solution comes with a, a pro and uh, pros and cons, and we are similarly to solve the sorting um, uh, out, uh, out, uh, problem. We have four algorithms. Each of them comes with a a, a pro and uh, pros and cons. So today, uh, or actually this week, we are going to focus on the first sorting algorithm named insertion sort. So uh, I think that my network is a little bit uh, unstable now. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So uh, the uh, people design the, the, inser uh, the insertion sort algorithm uh, for, uh, they got the intuition uh, of the uh, insertion sort uh, problem. Uh, sorry, the insertion sort algorithm from playing poker cards. So, for example, if you are playing poker cards, the thing is that say first you got a couple of cards in your hand which are, are, are already sorted. Like here in the, in the example. So, for example, if we got four, sorry, two, four, five, and ten in your hand already. They are sorted. These four cards are sorted in your hand, and then. Now you just grab a new card seven. So you are going to insert seven into the, the appro appropriate places in your hand. So that after the insertion, uh, with this new card, you got five cards and these five cards are sorted. So people design the algorithm by, uh, by so by playing uh, from, from uh, uh, playing uh, poker cards. Say every time, so say for example, if you got four cards that are already sorted and you got a new card, you want, so you want to sort, insert this new card into the correct place so that after the insertion, you got five cards uh, sorted. So, so say for example, if we have a couple of, if we have a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of numbers to be sorted. So what we do is that say first, we're going to, uh, let's say, I'm, j I'm just going to use the previous example, 31, 41, and uh, 59, 26, 41, and 58, okay? So we got six numbers to be sorted. The way that we sort it, uh, we can sort it, uh, sort these cards pretty much, uh, so sorry, we can sort these numbers pretty much like when, uh, as if we are playing poker cards. So the first thing is that, okay, we initially our hand is, has no card. There is no card in our hand. This is our hand. This is our hand. We, we, there is no card at our hand, so we're going to, to get a new card from the table. So just imagine that all these cards are in the table now. So, uh, and then we're going to get the first card. So, so because our hand is, is empty, there is no card in our hand. So we're going to get the first card from the table, which is 31. So we got, so our hand has, now our hand has one card. That's erase 31 from the table because it's, it's gone. So, and then, okay. So next time, uh, so, sorry. Uh, and next time we're going to get the second card. Uh, so, so which is, which is 40, 41. So it's like you got a new card for 41 and you have a, a card 31 at your hand. And then you want to put 41 behind 30, uh, 31 because 41 is larger than 31. So you need to put it after 31. So, so now you got two cards sorted, right? You got two, two numbers sorted. And next time you got the third card, which is 59. So you compare, so first you compare 49 with the last, with the last card in your hand, which is, 
this is the last so this is the last card in your hand you are going to compare the new card 59 with 41 and it's 59 is larger than 49 sorry sorry 50 uh, 59 is larger than 41 so where should 59 go where should the new card go uh, after 41 sorry after 41 yes after it so so you know that you are going to insert the new card uh, uh, 59 after uh, for uh, sorry after uh, 41 so that now you got three cards at your at your hand uh, in the sorted order in, in assigning order and then you are going to get another card which is 26 so you are going first you are going to compare 26 with this with this card which is I'm going to use a different color okay with 49 okay you find that 26 is less than 49 sorry it's less than 59 so 26 should go before 59 right and then so you compare uh, 26 with the the previous with the, the, the car before uh, uh, 59 so which is 41 okay again 26 is less than so 26 is less than 41 and next you compare 26 with with uh, with uh, the first car in your hand which is uh, thir 31 so it is less than 31 so you know that the new card which is which is uh, say say the um, 26 should go before your first card so it should be at this place right so in this way you got you got uh, four cards sorted in your hand and then you, you get the next card you get the next card uh, which is 41 41 so you so first again you compare 41 with the last color at your hand it, it, it is smaller than it is smaller than for uh, 59 so you know that 40 41 should go before 59 so so then next you compare 41 with the second last last card in your hand so they are equal so which means that um 41 basically can share this so the new card 41 basically can share the same position with the original 41 so so here what we do is that we just insert it into this place insert it right right after insert it before uh, 41 and 59 so this is the place of the new card this is where the new card is located we're going to insert it uh, in between 41 and 59 and the next time you're you're going to get a new card which is 58 so the last card from the table which is 58 over here so again you are going to compare 58 with the last last card in your hand so you find that 58 is smaller than your last uh smaller than your last card so 58 should go before the last last card and then you compare 58 with the second last last card in your hand it's larger than 41 correct so which means that the correct place of, of 58 is in between 41 and 59. Am I correct? So you are going to insert the new card 58 in between your second last last uh, second last card and the, the last card in your hand. So we do we do the insertion by moving the last card one position to the right and then leave the space for the new card which is 58 so in this way you, you move all the six cards or six numbers from the table into your hand in an, in an assigning order does it make sense yes yeah. okay so this is the uh, how people uh, so so learn oh uh, so so sorry this is the procedure for us to sort numbers when playing poker cards and people so so those computer scientists design the same procedure design the, the exactly the same procedure to sort numbers and that is called insertion sort that which is over here and so um so because of the time limit today i only have time to briefly go through this this code and in the friday's class we're going to go through this this code uh, line by line together so so with an example so here uh, we got the first line as insertion sort a so tell me okay 
So what is what so what what does the first line represent? If or say if I ask you to translate it into Java, into in, into Java, how are you going to translate the first line? What does the first line stand for? Insertion sort bracket capital A. So wouldn't that just be like a for loop? Sorry? Wouldn't it be like a for loop? No. Here, I'm, I'm talk, talking about the top line, not, not no. the, the line with number one. I think it's going to be the array list, right? Sorry? The array list, right? The array list. No, uh, we're not playing array list. We're only playing with arrays. Doesn't the sort function make it go from like the smallest to the largest number? Yes, of course. But so uh, what I'm asking is, what does the how do how are we going to translate the, the top line into Java, or what does the top line represent? So is that like a parameter, the a? Yes, this is like yes, a is the parameter, the input parameter of the function, and here insertion sort a is the basically the de declaration of the function. Sorry, declaration. Declaration of the function. If you want to translate the first line into Java, it will be public, maybe void. So here, because we are not sure what is the return type of this, this function. So I'm just going to leave it as void, meaning that it does not return anything. And then we give it a name called insertion source. Here I'm just using lowercase letters. Uh, and A, so, so, uh, so when we are doing, sorting algorithms we're only playing with arrays so here the cap so the capital uh the the, the capital a is basically an array an, an array of integers so this is how we are going to translate the first line into java so you following that is a, a, a pair of brackets public void insertion sort so the function name is called insertion sort and takes one in one input parameter which is an integer array of and, and the name of the variable is A, capital A. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so I hope that all of you do know what does public mean, what does void mean, okay? So you have to know this in order to be successful in this class. Otherwise, this class is going to be too difficult for you. Um, so, and then let's look at the, the next few lines. So we got line number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So have you seen, so have you ever seen anything like this before? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is called what? What is, is this called? It's a for loop and it's assigning. Uh -huh. No, I mean in total. Uh, algorithm? Pseudocode. Oh, pseudocode. This okay. is defin definitely not Java code, right? Not C++ code. Ah, but we call, we call this pseudocode, okay? So, um, pseudocode. S so here we got human language. So I'm going to explain uh, the difference between pseudocode, human language, and uh, Java or C++ code. Okay, so Java or C++ code. Okay, so um, human, so as as uh, we people, on, on, so so are best at human languages. Human languages. We want to, we want to uh, ex express everything as human in human languages because because this is easier for everyone to understand. But our machines, this is what we can understand. We can only understand human languages. But our computers can only understand pro programming languages. So like Java or C++. This is what the machine can understand. Can understand. So if, if I ask, if I uh, say, 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 want to uh, explain the whole bunch of code over here in human language, it would be just like this. Play, uh, sorting, sort cards like playing poker cards. Sort, sort numbers just like playing poker cards. Right? It's, it's, it's going to be very short, very succinct, uh, very, very concise, but for, you know, if we want to translate that process into Java code, into a, a language that our, our machine, our computers can understand, it's going to be like a hundred lines of code. 
And but here for human language, it's like just like 10 words. So what we say is that there is a big gap, big difference between human language and machine language. So that's why people design something else in between them called pseudocode. Pseudocode is is a is is like a, a is like in the middle of human language and and machine language. So here that's so that's why you can say something like four, which are pretty much like uh, say 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 uh, the the Java like for loops. And then for J start for for J equal to two equal to it starts from two to a dot length. This is like machine. This is more like human language for the variable j starting from two to the length of the array. So it's it's basically a combination of 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 uh, human language and and machine language, so that it's easier for us to understand. If I give you a, a, a hundred lines of Java code to explain insertion sort, you will be totally disgusted. You 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 don't want even want to understand it. But if if we express this uh the the, the procedure in pseudocode, it's easier for you. Okay. So this is called a uh, pseudo pseudocode, and here in this pseudocode, we first we got a for loop, and then inside it we got another while loop. Okay, so I'm going to leave the the, the explanation of the uh, of this pseudocode to our Friday lecture. Okay, because our time is almost up. And before you go, let me know if you have any question. Ed, can you show us the links uh, for us to practice our job? Or to get acquainted with it, yes. Show the link to what? For like, um, if I have no experience in Java, like resource. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, uh, I'm going to post it on Canvas later. Okay, because I need to. I need to. I need some time to find them, find okay. those resources. Uh, okay. okay. Another question that I received is that are these slides posted? Yes. Go to uh, Canvas now. You you will be able to find them. Anything else? Okay, so if not, then uh, that's the end of our lecture today. So I will see you Friday again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye. everyone. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for the presentation.